there are only about a half a dozen countries in the whole world that don't bother to count their own votes, and we're one of them. The basic problem with paperless voting on these touchscreen machines and similar machines is that there's no way for the voter to check that their vote is being properly recorded. In a world where people spend hundreds of millions of dollars to influence popular opinion to help get their candidate elected, it's entirely feasible to imagine a wide variety of fraudulent behavior. Global Election Systems was actually founded by a bunch of felons. One of the guys who founded it, Michael K. Gray, ended up going to prison. He's still in prison, in fact. He stole $18 million and was convicted of, of money laundering and grand theft and income tax, eva tax evasion and stock fraud. What we found was pretty disturbing in that there were discussions of, uh, you know, Diebold employees um, knowing that they were using uncertified code in elections. If you got your hands on one of those cards after the election, you could erase all of the results that were initially there and write anything else you wanted to the card. Eddie Campbell put the card into the machine. The machine read the card. Eddie Campbell smiled, glared at me, put the card back in his pocket and walked out of the count room. To date, we require no levels of the common criterion NIST um, computer security standards for our voting systems. There's a variety of methods to uh, present false code that may run during testing but won't be the code that's running during uh, the actual execution of the election. Those poll watchers witnessed because they were inside the polls as well as outside the polls and, and we were unique in doing this in the country. They witnessed voters trying to vote for one candidate but the selection going to another candidate on the screen. In one Youngstown precinct, some voters reported that their votes had hopped from Kerry to Bush. And the poll workers also reported uh, phantom votes, where in their precinct, the one they worked in, they noted that there were more, the machines counted more votes than what people voted, signed, signed the voter law. There has been one after another after another, adding up to hundreds, adding up to thousands, and the media is not reporting it. Where is the mainstream media? This, this uh, consortium was formed in 1965, and they were given essentially final control over the processing and dissemination of, of our votes and voting results. Those forces, uh, those corporate uh, forces that make money off war, and off counting the votes are not going to go easily. We have established in this country a sort of a privatized process. In fact, we've outsourced the voting machinery. We've outsourced the testing of the voting equipment. These are all done by private actors. They seem to serve as a sort of one-stop shopping center for elections. They sell the machines, they program the machines, they service the machines, print the ballots, count the ballots, assemble the data, and apparently change the data. But they had remote patches where they could actually interact with it, and they were monitoring what the, what the votes were as they happened, and if they wanted to make some kind of, of change or to maintain, main, main, do maintenance on the machine if something goes wrong, all they do is flip a button, which is kind of an interesting system, <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> What I tell people is whenever someone wants to take your votes away and count them in secret, you have a problem. You don't have to understand all about computers. When they want to take your votes for you, you can't see how the count's going, you have a problem.